Hi guys, in this tutorial we're going to cover um, the functional introduction or introduction to functional programming in Java 8 and higher. And in particular we're going to look at three commonly used methods that the functional approach um, offers. And we are going to implement a very simple example to demonstrate these features. Typically, you would want to use the functional approach when you're dealing with um, data. Well, there are various other use cases, but for simplicity, we're going to just focus on uh, one use case, which is when you have a collection of items and you want to do something with that collection or query or modify and um, all these things. So imagine we have a list of strings. It's going to contain our data, which is going to be just some names. So I'm going to um, just come up with some names. Adam, Bob, uh, Carol, Dave, Eve, um, Francis, Greg, um, Helen, and let's do some repetitions that begin with the same letter. So, Anne, um, Chris, David, Daniel, um, George. There we go. So, we've got our data. <clears throat> Now, in order to access the functional style, you typically do data and you, well, if you have a collection called data, for example, then we're going to call stream on it, which returns um, a stream and it is almost like a view of your data. It's not necessarily a data structure. Um, it's a medium which is lazily computed. So, when you have a list, it already has all the items inside the list, which means um, we're limited to a finite uh, number of items. With streams, you can do infinite items, number of items, because streams are lazily computed. And the actual computation only happens when you invoke a terminal operation. So here's a bit of theory. Uh, and you can read all of that on, um, well, inside the Java docs or just online. So today we're going to focus on two, um, three functions. So that would be filter, map, and collect. In order to, uh, so to speak, enter the functional world, you do stream. Um, there are various ways of obtaining a stream um, of data, but if you have a collection, which you typically do, just call stream on it. Now we can apply various functions such as filter. We can filter our stream in order to obtain a stream of the same type. So if there was a stream of strings, then after calling filter, what you get back is the same, not the same, but also a stream of strings. Filter takes a predicate, or in other words, something that consumes um, an object of type string, because we're doing strings now, and returns a billion, uh, sorry, true or false. And if the billion expression returns true, then that item will be filtered to the next stream. And if it's false, then it will be filtered out. So for example, we can do name, name starts with A. So that predicate uh, will, um, well, it will filter out everything that does not start with an A, which means in the new stream that this method returns, there will be only two items, Adam and Anne, because these both items start with A. And the function that is inside here um, will be applied to every item in the stream. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, and that thing is called a lambda expression that I'm not going to talk about. Um, lambda, we're going to just focus on these three functions for simplicity. Once we've filtered, we can then call something like for each, which is essentially a different syntax for the typical for each loop that we've had since Java 5. And I can do something like um, that. The ID will probably prompt you to use method uh, reference like this, but I'm going to keep it simpler than that and capture um, the name variable and use it. So if I run this, we should have only two items printed. Yeah, so we have Adam and we have Anne because both of these items start with A. If I replace it with capital D, we will get three items, Dave, David, and Daniel. Right, so that's filtering. With map, you have a data stream. You apply map and pass a function or a lambda expression that does something um, on each item and returns potentially a different type. So if you want to map a stream of strings to a stream of integers, then that's what you want to do. Uh, you can call map. You can also map to the same type. So you can map from stream of strings to a stream of strings. For example, we can create, um, we can call it to uppercase, which means we're going to make each letter um, in our name and convert it um, to an uppercase. We're going to take each letter and convert it to uppercase. Uh, yeah, right. So I'm not going to print that to avoid confusion. There you go. All letters are in uppercase. So we've mapped from the same type, um, or we've mapped from type X to type X, essentially. If you want to map from type X to type Y, you can do that, and you would use map for it. There is a more specific map, such as map to int, where you take some type, which is in our case string, and map to an integer. So we could call length on each item, which would return the number of letters in that word or in that name. So it's num letters, which I can then print. So this will take each item, compute its length, and then print. So there are four letters in the word Adam, and uh, these things can be applied respectively. And because this is an int stream, which is a more specific type of st stream, we can call various operations like sum, for example. I'm going to keep it like this for now. So that's map. You apply map when you want to map from one type to potentially a different type. And this essentially um, destructs the original data in the sense that you won't have access to it. So here, I don't have access to my uh, item, which is name. With filter, you're simply filtering. You're not destructing anything. You're not destroying anything. Right, so the final thing is collect. You can use collect to collect a stream of things into um, one of the JDK data structures, such as list, set, or just generic collection. The thing that I um, found very useful is collectors to, I uh, know, collectors group, grouping by. So imagine you want to group your items based on a particular property that those items possess, which could be the first letter. So say you want to group these names um, based on the first letter. So if the first letter is A, then we're going to group them 
by um, well that group is going to contain two items Adam and Anne and we can do that for every letter and the most natural data structure for it is a map which maps the character which is the first letter to some collection or a list of names so the character A would map to the list containing Adam and Anne uh, groupings if you were to approach this using the object-oriented approach um, then you would end up with quite a bit of code with the functional approach it's a lot easier because what we can do or because of this particular useful um, function that is called grouping by we take the data item and we use the property that we want to um, group by such as the first character and just like that we've obtained all these groupings which I can very easily print using the for each function and which takes a by consumer which is first letter and names again you probably would want to look at lambda expressions either before this tutorial or afterwards so and then um, redo these steps so that they're more so that they're clearer and I can print so I can say um, first letter and then names so that should create groupings and print them so if you ignore this output then we'll see that the character A um, and the groupings or the group contains Adam and Anne and so on for other characters so very easily or relatively easily we've obtained uh, what would have been somewhat complex using the object-oriented approach and there would be more chances to introduce bugs using the object-oriented approach right so um, one of the most important things to note is when you're using the functional approach you're focusing on the intent as in what you want to do and not how you want to do it and everything else is figured out by just some magic kind of thing with the OO approach you typically say what you want to do in terms of how you want to do it as well so you, you kind of say do this do that uh, and then you provide implementations for these do this and do that here you're just going to say collect and group by this in fact you could have even taken this away into a method reference and call it something like group by first letter in which case it would be even more readable and so in this tutorial we've looked at the very first or very gentle introduction to um, functional programming what you have is the stream method that you can call on collections that will give you a stream object on which you can operate and uh, they can also be parallelized very easily you just replace stream uh, with parallel stream but that's for another tutorial and we've also looked at filter which allows you to filter a stream into uh, another stream of the same type and we've looked at map which allows us to map a stream um, to another stream potentially of a different type but it could also be the same type and finally we looked at how to collect these things back to our data structures such as list and map and also uh, don't forget to vote on the contents of the next video the link will be in the description thanks for watching